wanted to talk with y'all today about something that I believe the Lord has laid in my spirit. And it's about the test run for debauchery. The test run for debauchery. And what does that mean? I want you to understand that the things that as of late has been broadcasted on YouTube and on other platforms about the things that's happening in the church there seems to be no boundaries things are happening we have people just it just seems like it's an all-out party the language the protocols that used to be in place when you're in the house of God those boundaries and those lines are being pushed against and they are pretty much non-existent right now and so there's a shock about it and there's a lot of talk about it and there's an, an outcry about it and there may be responses a response back uh, back and forth in debate but I want you to understand that this is happening because it's really a trial run it's a test run for what is to come Understand if they haven't done it already, there's going to be stripper poles in churches. Understand if it hasn't happened already, you're going to be able to walk in the church and it's going to be set up like an actual club. No longer are you going to sit in rows. They're going to set it up where you can actually sit at little tables. And you can be served a meal and you can be served a drink while you listen to the word of God. You can go up to the lounge because they already have churches like that. It's like if you, you can go down in the congregation and then there's a lounge, you can go up there if that makes you more comfortable. Things are slowly changing. And if you really look over what church was and how it used to be, and we're just talking about I, I'm not talking, I know sometimes there can be some things that was a little old fashioned, maybe a little over the top, but we just talk about the, let's go to just the reverence and the respect when you walked into a church. You knew if you had your hat on, you're going to take it off. If you're chewing gum, you're probably going to spit it out. And you're going to sit down quietly and you're going to pay attention. Back in the days, people, if they're driving outside a church, they have their music up when they're up the block. When the, they're coming by the church, they're going to turn the music down. There's a time people wouldn't even curse. You're walking with your friends, and one of them say a cuss word in front of the church. We're like, man, watch out what you're saying. You're walking in front of the church. Now we understand it's a building, but we're talking about the reverence that was once there. But see, something has been allowed to trickle into the house of God. Little by little by little by little by little. We went from dressing a certain way where you had your skirts and, and whatever and, and the suits. And then we moved to, to other things. And now the skirts got smaller. And we went to bodycon and we got to the, the muscle shirts and, and we got to the, the tight jeans and we got the baseball hat on with a little foil inside of it. And we're just doing more and more and more and more flesh and more see-through and more revealing. And now we have cleavage and we have all this stuff going on and then people coming in drunk, all this stuff. We got hickeys on X. You know, I, I do remember once when I was... Uh, sitting through some rehearsals for a praise team. And I remember this girl came in and she had on, I mean, she had a huge hickey on her neck and she for sure was single. And she had on this top that was kind of see-through and she had on these jeans with little holes and rips in it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, these things are going on. And little things we cut the lights off right people are thinking we're saving energy we're saving money 
we turn the lights off in the church and now we're using smoke machine and fog lights and all the stuff and the strobe lights and things are different and we have a DJ and we have this going on and then we we move from us clapping our hands and singing before God to now we have the praise dances uh, formerly praise dancers now they're the whole dancers they're up front and they're doing all types of gyrating and carrying on and they are standing in front of god's people doing all these different things and these spandex and splitting and it's just so much that's happening and so we move from that and then we we, we change away the music sound and we start saying well we need to bring in a sound that's going to draw the masses okay just say let's open a club just go ahead and say that but we're going to call it something else and so people are coming in and things are getting wild and i believe i've heard one time a pastor was talking about when they were having a conference for for people I guess for, for couples, married couples in the church, and they were talking about how to pleasure your wife. And so the pastor literally has someone up there and he is using his hands to show how to stimulate, to stimulate an orgasm. And this was going on in front of the church, in front of this group of people, okay? And this was supposedly teaching, quote unquote, let's do the air quote, teaching. So little by little, things were allowed, okay? How were we being drip fed the nonsense? Well, it starts with the indiscretions. Pastor caught stealing, forgive him, let him keep preaching. Pastor's beating his wife or pastor she's beating her husband, forgive her. They're called by God, let them keep teaching. Pastor's been caught messing with children, pastor's wife has been caught in the bed with this man don't say nothing turn a blind eye they we should love them and they've been allowed to continue abuse all kinds of mayhem duis not taking care of their families children all over the place it's okay all this stuff is going on cursing out people doing this disrupting stuff calling someone's husband's over to to cut her grass outside and to cut the grass on the inside if you know what i'm saying all this stuff has been happening and and it's been allowed and it's been tolerated and then we move to darkening the church and putting in the lights and we move to the music and we move to the gyrating and we move to we don't need to 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 dress accordingly and all I'm saying, if people will say, well, you're being religious and why should we look a certain way? Because when you are going to meet the president of the United States, if you are anybody that's about anything, you're going to dress accordingly. When you're going on a job interview, you're going to dress accordingly. When you're going to see your mayor and when you're going to visit the governor and when you're going on certain trips, you dress accordingly. And so therefore, we have lost reverence for God. And I'm telling you guys today, as you listen to me the things that you're seeing the the partying in the church any kind of the worldly music in the church that this is the test run for the new churches that's to come one person has stepped out they're the trial run seeing how everybody's acting but guess what's going to happen people are still going to be filling those seats people are still going to come and then all of a sudden people are going to say well maybe he's known something maybe she knows something maybe we're the one that's wrong and there's going to there will be, be more and more of these types of churches where it's going to be an all out party there's going to be all types of things that will begin to go on don't be surprised where there will be a marriage night when it's all out orgies all out swinging and then we're going to justify that someone's going to find something in the bible to justify why you can do a wife swap for one night don't be surprised because what it is you see when people want to do what they want to do they're going to believe whatever they want to believe the things that's happening right now it is a trial run it is a test run because the problem is God's not looking at the, the one, the two, the thousands that may be doing some things, these leaders. He's looking at the congregation. Are you going to keep following this person? Because without the majority, if the church don't show up, that stuff can't go down. They got to take it to the house. 
but they are being funded by the body of Christ. They're being enabled by the body of Christ. And the churches will still be packed because there's a role that is wide and many is on it. And only, and, and, and there's another gate that only a few will find. So only a few will probably pull themselves out of these places, but the masses will stay and they will be happy because it tickles the flesh. What you're seeing that's going on in the ministries has been a long, slow, jip, jip, I'm sorry, drip feeding of little indiscretions, whether it was lying, stealing, sexual immorality, and when that's allowed, you level up to the next thing, and 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 now the church is dark, and now there it, it's like a club, and it's going to change now. And now you're seeing more debauchery. You're seeing more ungodliness. You're hearing worldly music being, being uh, played in the church and then the Bible being used to justify it. I have said in the past that the word of God is as quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God in the wrong word, in the wrong hands, can be used, can be used to destroy and to fool people. It's gonna fool the people that want to be fooled. And it's gonna fool people who really want to know God, but who are intercepted on the way, like the big bad wolf that intercepted Little Red Riding Hood on the way to grandma's house. You understand? And that's what's going on now. So as children of God, we have to make these decisions as far as what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are you going to do? And truly, a lot of people are simply afraid and terrified because they have not developed their relationship with God. They don't know how to understand or read their Bibles. But the Holy Spirit is a patient teacher and he's willing to show you and he's willing to teach you. But you need to come back to him. It's going to get worse. There's going to be a springing up of new, a new type of church that is going to be set to gratify the flesh that will allow more immorality, that will allow more lasciviousness, that will allow more debauchery. It will, it's going to be so much worse. Things will happen in that church of darkness Things will take place. P children will be put in these rooms. The quote, air quote, children's church, teen church. But it's going to be setting them up even for the unthinkable. And guess what? The church will be like a cult. That's going to hide the secrets. That's going to tell these teenagers and these young people why it was good that they were chosen and how their testimonies and if they tell what it can do and why God will be displeased. It's going to keep, they're going to keep pushing the boundaries more and more and more and more. And you know why that is going to happen and why it is happening? Because a lot of people will sit in these places and say nothing. They will sit there and be pious and say, well, I'm a good person and I'm here for God when you shouldn't have been there in the first place. The ungodliness that you're seeing today that is being introduced to the house of God as of late, the gyrating praise team, the gyrating choirs, the song artists that who are move from doing the ungodly things they used to do behind closed doors, bring it on the stage and it's okay. They have been ushering, ushering the blind, those who want to be blind, ushering them to this place that they're in right now, which now sets the stage just like in a church. The praise team, the singer, the choir goes first and prepares the heart of the people for the message, for the leading of by that leader. And that's what's been going on. The music led 
individuals, it moved from being holy, a new song, to whirly, to gyrating, to shaking it, to legs out, to booty out, all these different things, uh, body tight tops, drunk drummers, drunk people on the, on the keyboards, all the stuff, just got out the bed, crawled out the pastor's back door, got up there to sing the praise, the song of praises. These things have been happening. The church has gotten darkened. People wearing less and less. Now we have worldly music in the house of God with the profanities and everything in it. Or they may play the clean version of it because it's a dry run. It's a test run. And guess what? Guess who's going to eat off that fruit? Guess who's going to take a bite of that fruit, just like Adam and Eve did, the body of Christ. And then you're going to see just a landslide of craziness that's happening in the church. This is just a test run for what is to come. The question you need to ask yourself is, whose side are you on? What are you going to do about it? You continue to warm the seats in there? Or are you going to look up and be led by the Spirit of God? Because guess what? Just like that Colosseum where Samson was, where the pillows fell and everyone was destroyed, that's what's getting ready to happen. That's what's getting ready to happen from the head on down. Because we all have a choice. All right, guys. God bless.